Okay, let's get into the word. Okay, let's go to chapter four. <clears throat> Abraham justified by faith. So I'm going to read TPT. No one's going to fall asleep. Say it's in my hands. If I fall asleep. in a movie theater, you never fall asleep. How come? In a Tom Cruise Mission Impossible movie, try falling asleep. And tell me, people tell me, I don't know what it is. When I come to church, I fall asleep. Don't know what it is. No, it is you. You have to control your flesh. Because it is the most important time, biggest investment you'll ever do. And so you have to make sure that you keep yourself awake. And that's what good soil is. It keeps the distractions away. Okay. Abraham, chapter 4. Was Abraham Jew or Gentile? You know what Gentile means? What does Gentile mean? Non-Jew. Non-Jew means the, all the covenants, all the promises, everything were given to the Jewish people. But Abraham himself was not Jewish. He was just a regular guy like you and me. He believed God and it says that God called him righteous. So he was righteous by faith. And to declare this righteousness by faith, that generation that came after Abraham, God said, circumcise all of them. And that entire nation, everyone who came after Abraham became a Jewish nation. But it started because he, God called him righteous by faith. Your understanding. Okay. Okay. So now see this four. So Romans is written to Jewish people, Gentiles also, who had just got born again probably. And Paul is trying to tell them because probably Jewish faith. And God was trying to disqualify the Jewish people. All need a savior. The whole world needs a savior. Okay, and that's how you read this. Now we're going to go into chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found a God? He has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. For him who works, that means you earn something, you're trying to get something from God by what you do. The wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let me read that again. But to him who does not work, but believes on him, that is Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for. That means you'll receive everything in your life. Why? Why should you see? Because he studied. He clearly didn't study. Two months before the exam, he goes and tells his parents, I don't know anything. And no tuition person also wants to take him because their name will get spoiled probably. This kid has come two months trying to learn accounts. And then on his own, he goes on YouTube. The Lord leads him. Because, see, when you come in this realm, you it's all by grace. And the father is the one doing everything for you. And tomorrow he'll get ahead in life also, far ahead of all his peers. Because the father is with him. And he invested in the one thing. The father, the biggest investment you can ever make is in the word. Okay? So see this. It says here, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Now, David is on this side, waiting for the cross because Jesus has not yet come there. And David is looking and knows and God has given him a vision and he sees of that man one day where God is going to impute righteousness, like give righteousness apart from their works. That means they don't have to do. And imagine David, Moses and all are waiting for that generation of people. That is you and me. David, Moses and all today are in heaven and they become sons of God. Including Mary. Mother Mary has also a son of God. Okay. Now see this. Look at this. <clears throat> Blessed are those who lawless, whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. This is you. Say, blessed am I to whom the Lord does not impute sin. That is you. That's why you can see life and life in abundance. Okay? 
Abraham justified before circumcision. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only, that means Jewish people, or upon, or upon the uncircumcised also, that means the Gentiles? We are like the Gentile nation, were, before we were in Christ. For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then can was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Because he was Gentile. Right? See, now, Paul is trying to ex explain this. Because wh what happened? Over the years, people got dull. Like religion came in and Jewish people, and they're not even keeping the law, but they're throwing the law on other people, disqualifying them. And so they're not even thinking. And what is happening in all of you? Awareness is coming. Like you're questioning things. Like the Bible has to be read. That's why I started, who is Romans written to? You can't just take everything out of context. Who is he talking to? He's talking to Jewish unbelievers. Means Jewish people who got born again, but they don't have any understanding. They're probably just trying to keep the law still. Okay? And so, and then he's talk, talking about the Jewish and now Gentiles probably coming to that church and how the Jewish people are reacting to the Gentile brothers also. Okay? Now see this. You are understanding? Does this blessing then come? Where did I finish? Yeah. Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them. You are understanding. Is this too much? Can you understand that language? Someone in SLS asked, what is circumcised? What does circumcised mean? They cut the foreskin in the males. But it was a sign. A sign of, because Abraham was righteous by faith. And so God said, this will be a sign that Abraham's righteousness will be extended to all of you. By faith. But what happened after them? They started to trying to get by works. But it was a sign what? That after him all who come, I will extend this righteousness. That means I'll give blessings because of faith, not because of works. Are you understanding? You are understanding. Beloved is good soil. Okay? See, it is a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while still uncircumcised. That means he was a Gentile. That he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised that righteousness might be imputed to them also and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. We'll, reach, we'll read the TPT also in this, okay? Now, what does the heading say for the next? The promise granted through faith. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. See how God sees? It's all about the seed. It's saying, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world. Heir of the world. How do you become heirs? Only righteousness can make you an heir over death. That he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. Means everyone born of him. Through the law, that means by doing anything good or not doing anything, but through the righteousness that comes by faith, by believing simply in the blood, by believing because of what Jesus. So your condition for any problem you're going through, say a court case, say you're passing an exam, say a health issue, say a relationship issue. You know what you should be saying? Not because whether you have your documents right. I told you my aunt won a court case. Her documents weren't even in order. Someone else's documents were in order. But on that day, by mistake, the other party spoke in her favor. And she won. She only knew that Jesus is with me. That means righteousness by faith. Means because of Jesus, my portion is life. Because I did the one thing that those people didn't do. They didn't believe. How do you become a son of God? It says those who received him, they... God gave them the right, the Father gave them the right to become children of God. Not, this is in the Gospel of John, not born of flesh, not born of someone's will, but born of God. God's children, 
will never see death say that yes i will never see death in my life in any area your portion beloved sons is life and life in abundance it says justification for life why should you have justification for life because of the blood because you did something that many didn't do you received christ and because of that one decision you're here everything has become new you're in psalm 91 the secret place of the most high that place is in christ where nothing can touch your loved ones where everything is falling at your left and right but it is not coming near you that is your place okay and he says with long life i will satisfy righteousness leads to life all of you will have long lives no accidents touching you or your loved ones because you are here it cannot okay see this <clears throat> you are receiving what i'm saying we are going slow it's okay because i want you to have understanding okay though they are uncircumcised what am i saying that righteousness might be imputed to them also oh sorry i was on the next one okay the promise granted through faith for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith for if those who are of the law are heirs faith is made void and the promise made of no effect that means by karma if you want to get right it's saying faith is made void there is no need for jesus to come faith is made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings about wrath the law brings about wrath for where there is no law there is no transgression where there is is there a law in bombay that says don't drink alcohol so suppose you drink alcohol have you broken anything but if you go to gujarat or ahmedabad where is that ha huh? is in gujarat all of gujarat if you go there there is a law that says don't drink alcohol now if you drink it's a, by the way highest consumption is in gujarat you put the law what happens everyone feels even when i don't feel like drinking i feel like drinking that's what will happen you tell me not to drink i'll drink more the law was meant to arouse sin that means what you don't want to do you will want to do the purpose of the law beloved is intelligent what was it the purpose of the law god gave the law to arouse sin that means you don't want to watch that magazine and now i said don't watch that magazine you want to go and flip all pages of the magazine that's what the law was to 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 make man realize that you have sin and you need a savior that's why the bible says galatians that the law was a tutor to bring us to christ like just fall you need a savior that's what it does okay so it says here where there is no law god lifted up the law but how did he lift it up someone went and fulfilled it someone went and established it for you and me and that someone is jesus he fulfilled it because in this body you cannot get right religion wants righteousness in the flesh they should give up it is not possible whether hinduism muslim any any religion including christianity wants righteousness in the flesh means they want to see god people god man you become so perfect and priya when you're having the worst day come and smile at me i'm sorry if i'm having a bad day you're going to see i'm having a bad day because my righteousness is not in my flesh it is by faith and you need to learn to see me righteous apart from my flesh because we all have flesh that's what jesus said who without sin throw the first stone who among you without sin throw the first stone what was he trying to say we are all sinners and he is the only one who had no sin when that woman came who was caught in the act of adultery it takes two people no for adultery but only one came where's the other one they got the woman and then everyone wanted to stone and then jesus said okay correct you're throwing the law at me because everyone said that in the law it's written such should be stoned and then jesus said okay stone her but he who is without sin and then everyone went away put their stones away and if there was anyone who could stone her it was him because he is the one without sin and he gives no condemnation to her and he says go and sin no more where are those accusers of yours really 
Okay, so what does true holiness do? In true holiness, there is no condemnation in a son. And true holiness changes the person. That's why we have children here, our greatest testimonies. is because this here, you tell them who they are. And you water the right seed, it will produce the right fruits. Okay, none of them we ever said come. They came because they wanted to, because the seed of the sun is in them. And you water that seed and everything in you, sons, after you receive Christ, wants to, not has to, wants to be just like your father. And I believe that with all my heart. Stop trying to tell a lion to be a lion. Just remind him he's a lion. For the longest time, you've told the lion to become a lion. You've confused him. Like it's, it's abnormal for him to roar. He is going to roar. You know the Simba story, right? Simba goes and hangs out with some chipmunks. And so he's confused identity. And then one day he meets another lion like him. The Lion King story. And then he realizes who he is. But he needed to meet somebody just like him. To come back into who he always was. And so what did I do with beloved or anybody who comes? I don't water this seed. You water the right seed because I trust my father. You got born again. You died. And you became a son of God. There are two species in this world. Adam species and then sons of God. And you don't go and tell a son of God he's Adam. And try and be. You tell the son of God he is. And innately who he is. Because we're born of the seed of God. He will produce the same fruits. You are understanding what I'm saying. Okay? Say I'm understanding. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. See, he calls those things that do not exist as though they did. He doesn't call the things that do exist as though they do not. So when you have some things in your body, yeah, I see them. We're not saying don't call them as though they're not. They're facts. But the truth, it's like I told you when there's a law of gravity here, but when you go on the, on the moon, there's a higher law and that law will subdue the lower law, correct? On the moon, if some don't know, you will levitate, right? Why? Because it's a greater law. So the law of life is in the son of God. The law of life. And that law of life in you is innately going to repel all manner of sickness in you. Just the way Alice and Samuel, sorry, too many children in Beloved, and I try remembering their names. Just the way Alice and Samuel saw, they, they saw that somebody else came and pulled out, pulled out their child from the water. This is the law of life. You will see one day that you're getting healthier. That suddenly that allergy that you had has disappeared. Your cholesterol levels have come low. Suddenly you go and the lungs have cleared up. And then you're wondering, how come all of these are happening? Because, my dear, we are watering the right seed. And over time, what happens? This seed is growing and growing and growing. And that, that's the law of life. You'll realize all your white hair is turning black. Some of you don't have hair. Hair is coming back. And all of things where disorder, Adam brought in disorder. Now in Christ, in the second seed, the second seed brings in order. Your relationships and your families are getting restored. They are listening to you. They're coming in alignment. We have, we hardly share. I have so many people who write to me. I don't have their name saved. But there are so many testimonies of relationships I get. Where things getting restored. Recently, yesterday, someone shared a testimony. I put it on YouTube, uh, on the oneness group. She's like, this thing happened and the relationship got restored after years. Why? But because of this one person who is allowing herself to be watered, all her inheritance is coming in order. Even if it's an extension, your understanding, relative of a relative, even that is coming in order. Because you're watering the right seed. 
this is the gospel the gospel jesus came so that you can have life if you saw death in your life i'm sorry the wrong seed was watered or you went and sat in churches to were watering the wrong seed and then you go you sit here that's why i know beloved why because i know what i'm giving so i can trust it i don't know what others are giving so i don't trust it you water the right seed it will produce the right fruit and that's why i keep saying just come and hear the word hear the word hear the word that unconsciously that seed is getting watered and that seed is growing in you and you wake up and you will start walking in divine health you know the the bible says by his stripes you are healed you are a new creation healed i am the healed 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 means can't fall sick healed all of you healed I know that we're going to look at a church that is healed. I'm so excited for what God is doing all across the world through beloved. Because it is the body, it's time for the body to rise up. Okay? Now see this. It says here, where was I? Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all seed not only to those who are of the law. Did I read this whole chapter? No. not only to those who are of the law but also to those who are of the faith of abraham who is the father of us all as it is written i have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who whom he believed who he believed god who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did who contrary to hope who is this talking about abraham in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god and being fully convinced that what he had said he will do he was able to perform means what does righteousness of faith mean father you have spoken this and you will do this in me righteousness simply means you know what i love about god you know what righteousness means in the garden of eden adam heard god's voice and he didn't listen to his father to god and now all that the father wanted is listen to me imagine he listened to the devil right and all of this chaos this sin and death came into this world and condemnation came into this world judgment came so if you're in this realm if you're not in christ you're under the judgment of god you're called a son of disobedience you're called a son of wrath but when you're in christ you're not all of these things you're not all of these things and so what is righteousness by faith why did god love it when abraham believed is because it was so important for the father you just believe me you just believe me and that's why god said you know what you believed me now you're righteous by faith just because you believe in me my words so every time you believe what he says is declared righteous and righteousness leads to life okay beloved is waking up beloved is understanding okay now see this what was abraham what is abraham believed it says did not go by sarah's deadness for those who don't know abraham's story right abraham was married to sarah sarah couldn't conceive for the longest time and god said through you through you i'm going to bless and descendants are going to come so abraham was married to sarah and god gave a promise like 25 years before that and it didn't happen and it says at even 100 god abraham it says that he did not waver he did not look at his sarah's deadness of her womb or whether he was incapable and it said that he just believed in the word so your faith is where carnal mind looks at the stomach looks at the performance not happening but faith righteousness of faith means what it's not got anything to do with flesh and blood it's got everything to do with him you're understanding what i'm saying okay now see this 
he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness righteousness simply means believe what i say about you and today righteousness for you and me sons is when we are believing the new seed not the old seed that's the old will he's like excuse me i have fulfilled the old will now i'm in the new will so when you believe the old it's not righteousness by faith sorry in hebrews it says what is obsolete and gone please let it be gone i've come and established a new will i told you last week we discussed what is testament testament means will 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 comes in effect after someone dies so now we are in the new will so you better believe in the new will he is very angry when you don't believe the new will because he he sent somebody heavy to pay the price for the new will he sent his son so when you believe the old will it's almost like you're dishonoring the son please believe what he says about you so if he says you're holy please receive it he knows you're not holy in your flesh he sees you in christ when you look at this body is going to mess up that's why romans 8 will read jesus had to come in the body get crucified in the flesh so that when you look at this body and it messes up you can still see it in the blood and your righteousness is by faith in christ that's how you receive the devil points you to your flesh the father will always point you to the spirit to it says my spirit bears witness with your spirit that we are sons of god not to your flesh but religion wants righteousness in the flesh religion and that's really righteousness in the flesh has to go to the cross up until you're not at peace with it you'll keep falling sick the day you are at peace with it that my right standing is by faith you'll stop judging others also and you will start receiving for yourself divine health in your body because we are one okay see this it says here now it was written not for his sake alone but it was imputed to him but also for us say also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up jesus from our dead from, from who raised up jesus our lord from the dead who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our see this there's so much of power he was delivered up because of our offenses but do you know when he rose again it proves we won because it was not his sins it was our sins that he took and so when he rose again it should show you victory ye we go free he was it says he was delivered up because of our offenses but he was raised up because of our justification why you should see in that area you should see the goodness of god do you know what it means to see the glory of god it means in whatever area you're going through what is the goodness you're believing what do you want god to do for you and it says when jesus tells martha do you not know that if you believe that you will see the glory of god that means glory of god is whatever in that area so if you're sick seeing divine health if it's a court case seeing victory if it's a relationship seeing victory in that relationship that is the glory of god to see the goodness of god in that area and that you're going to see it and how do you see it through righteousness god is not looking at your paperwork he is only looking at the blood the blood okay and you're in the realm of the blood if you got born again it says god took you out of the realm of darkness and put you in the realm of light this place that you live in is righteousness this place is in the realm of his blood nothing can penetrate his blood that's where you live that's where your loved ones also live so rest okay now see this can we read romans 4 in tpt one chapter a day we do one chapter a sermon how many chapters we'll go through <laughs> how many months okay but we are understanding we want understanding right we are not going fast i'll quickly read tpt chapter 4 let me use abraham as an example it is clear that humanly speaking he was the founder of judaism read this is studying okay see he is the founder of judaism 
Judaism came from where? Abraham. But Abraham himself was Gentile and God called him righteous by faith. Okay? What was his experience of being made right with God? Was it by his good works of keeping the law? No. For it was, for if it was by the things he did, he would have something to boast about. But no one boasts before God. Listen to what the scriptures say. Because Abraham believed God's words. See, I believe God's words. All of you sons believe God's words. And God's words are now these words. The new will words. You can't go to the old words and say God's words. Because God also doesn't see you there. Even Moses himself doesn't see. Even David doesn't. They all see in the new word. So if you are seeing in the old, it's deception. It is the truth. See this. Listen to what the scriptures say. Because Abraham believed God's words, his faith transferred God's righteousness into his account. When people work, they earn wages. It can't be considered a free gift because they earned it. But no one earns God's righteousness. It can only be transferred when we no longer rely on our own works, but believe in the one who powerfully declares the ungodly to be righteous. In See this. But believe in the one who powerly, powerfully declares the ungodly or godly? Declares the, say it loudly. To be, that means to be godly. He is declaring the ungodly to be godly, to be righteous in his eyes. In it is faith that transfers God's righteousness into your, scratch your hair. It is through, how did JJ get 82%? Maybe he can now go to his scholar friend who has been slogging it out. And then he goes and stands next to him. And he's got 82%. While the other one has got 62%. Trust in God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. You invest in this world. You will get money. You will get rich. Very thing. Everything. But you will not be like the one who's trying to get money here. This money is through sweat. Here... You'll enjoy the money because you invested in the one thing. God's ways are very different. That's why you tithe. I'm encouraging everyone who don't tithe, take a tenth and just put it in God's work, in the seed, not in synagogic. That means in people who are talking about death, in the new covenant, in church. Okay? What does it do? It will make money your servant. If you want to rule over money. And it makes the son a master. Because the Bible says that there are two. You cannot serve two gods. It calls money a god of this world. And everyone is worshipping it. Worshipping means you give everything to it. it. It is like it takes anything you worship means it takes all your time, all your energy, everything you're worshipping it. And so it's saying how do you make it your servant? Tithe, that's what Abraham did. You know, when Abraham won the battle with all the kings, right? It was questionable where he got all the money from. And that's why he didn't take any of the money. Read in the Old Testament. When Lot was taken away, uh, his nephew, and then Abraham goes and fights these four kings to get Lot back. And so now he gets a lot of spoil in that, in that war. And it says Abraham took a tenth of that and gave it to Melchizedek. Uh, also called Jesus in the old or representation of Jesus in the old. Okay. And it says that he gave a tithe to Melchizedek and he did not take any of that because it said, least they say that you made me rich. And then the next day God appears to him and says, he sees what Abraham has done because money is connected with the heart. It says where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And so the next day, God appears to Abraham and says, you know what? He sees what he did. He says, now I, I will be your exceedingly great reward. I will be your shield. That means when I make you rich, it beats all these four kings. And everyone in the Old Testament, if you see, they were all rich. I'm sorry, but riches comes from righteousness. 
poverty comes from the curse and so innately if you start hearing righteousness and in money start tithing i'm telling you it changed my life i started doing it i should not do it before but i had a dream in which god showed me a 10 coin on this you know in indians we have the thing if you scratch your hands from one hand money is going and so i understood that so in i just had a vision in the morning this was many years ago and i saw a 10 rupee coin on my left hand and so i was like what and he saying tithe and so i started and then i started studying tithe because i wanted to do everything by revelation not just by head knowledge and then i understood it was my heart and i needed to do that to show all the spiritual realm i do not worship you it was about my heart and to declare to all the principalities that he is my exceedingly great reward and when i started doing that he showed me what it is like to be maintained by the most high i say i'm high maintenance i am maintained by the most high he takes very good care of me okay i don't have a poverty mindset at all because your father is rich poverty mindset comes from adam poverty mindset means in everything you'll think abundance if you go to a house if it's a tenant do it up because someone else will get blessed praise god that's how jesus thinks don't think oh they will get blessed why should i do it you should because you are a life giver i told you i started doing up other people's places i got blessed triply my interior business started because a son is always life giving that means what i can do for you sonship in the flesh is what you can do for me no what i can do for you how can i bless you that's a son's mind always okay let's quickly finish this romans even king david himself speaks to us regarding the complete wholeness that comes inside a person when god's powerful declaration of righteousness is heard over his life over our life apart from our works god's work is enough here's what david says what happy fulfillment is ahead for those whose rebellion has been forgiven and whose sins are covered by blood what happy progress comes to them when they hear the lord speak over them i will never hold your sins against you this is your generation and my generation now think about it does this happiness come only to the jews or is it available to all who believe our answer is this faith was credited to abraham as god's righteousness how did he receive this gift of righteousness was he circumcised at the time god accepted him means was he a jew when god accepted him or was he still uncircumcised means was he a gentile clearly he was an uncircumcised gentile when god said this to him it was later that he received the external sign of circumcision as a seal to confirm that god had already transferred his righteousness to him by faith while he was still uncircumcised righteousness by faith you know abraham lied he gave his wife also to abimelech he did many wrong things and then god went and showed up in abimelech's dream and said you've done something wrong excuse me he gave me his wife and said how am i supposed to know he's that's his wife he told me that's his sister and gave because abraham was very scared of his life so to protect his life he says he tells sarah you go please tell everyone you're my sister and you please go into abimelech's harem imagine what's going on in sarah's head but do you know that in this realm is righteousness in righteousness there is no adultery no adultery it is a curse that comes from the law that you will marry somebody and he sleep with another but in the realm of righteousness you can rest that the father keeps each one's hearts towards each other it's a fruit of righteousness okay and so in this who protected abra protect, protected sarah god showed up in abimelech's dream and said if you touch this woman she's a you are a dead man and then god tells abimelech please call abraham and tell him to pray for you because god had closed up all the wombs of abimelech in the house in everybody like no one will bear fruit and then god comes he said he's a prophet abraham and then god says please call him and he will pray and then all of the wombs will be opened this guy was did all wrong but god saw him righteous that means his righteousness was was through his flesh 
or by faith? What is your righteousness like? Because we're heirs of Abraham. By? By? Are you okay with it? Do you receive it? It's in your own benefit if you receive it and not fight it. Because if you fight it and throw dirt of what they will do, forget they. It doesn't apply to you only. You disqualify yourself when you say they. Because as you judge, it will be judged to you first. Way before I say sugar is bad, I have declared my whole body, all my cells have heard that Priya thinks sugar is bad. Oh, then it starts taking notes. Please say sugar is bad. It's like that. So you see somebody else and you judge it, you have declared yourself guilty. That's what autoimmune disease comes from. Autoimmune is your cells fighting each other. What is that? Autoimmune. You want to get immunity? Come under this blood. One mind. Single-minded about your origin. Okay? And as I see myself, the same way I extend that to others. No judgment. Sorry. You're, I'm on this side. No matter what you do, seriously, I have to see you righteous in Christ. Not in your flesh. That's why it says in Corinthians, what does it say? We regard no one according to the flesh, not even Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he's the new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. How do you see each other? In the new, surpassing the flesh. Then you will not have any issues with any church. I told you, we will complete this in another five minutes. In 20 years, I never had any issue in any church. Seriously. The Lord knows. Not with people. I seriously didn't care. Because it was not the people. It was the word. And the reason I got out, I was only part of ever two churches in India. I got out is because they were not preaching the finished work. That's it. But people, I never had an issue. Because when you are a son of God, you receive everything from the Father. So then I understood when I used to talk to people, the first thing I came to India, and I realized a lot of tutu meme. Tutu meme. Tutu meme means there is a program called tutu meme. Bickering. And they used to be in each other's lives. And I'm like, why are they so ticked off with each other? And then as I started hearing the word, it was all righteousness in the flesh. So if you're not used to getting it from the father, the next person you want it is from the person sitting next to you. So you're looking for holiness in the flesh and you want the perfect people and everything and it becomes community. And community, but you, you come sick, you stay sick, you leave sick. But And then you want the prophet because a God-man one will come and lay hands or whatever. They did not know who they are in Christ. And so when I entered, I found it like Tutu Meme so much in India and I saw it in the churches. And then I was never really irritated because if you're a life giver, you're so busy giving life that you're not really expecting it back. You are the life giver. And so you're giving and you're going to fix somebody or you're going to fix someone's life and you go on moving on. Because everything that you need is coming from the Father. It's when this is not there, now you start looking at what can you give me. But it was never meant to be given by each other. It's coming from here. And even as we are going and refreshing, guess who's refreshing you? He who refreshes is refreshed by him. We are meant to be life givers. Go and blow out others', others fires. And your fire will get blown out by him. I've seen that. Okay? Be a life giver. That means go and give life. You are called to give life. Not life sucking. Life giving. That means everything should be on the word. So the minute I see complaints, your, life, your eyes have gone off that word and now it's gone on. If it's really on the word, you won't be. You'll be so busy bathing in the testimonies and all of that or working out that word in your trials that you have no time to look at the people next to you. Okay? Now see this. Let me go ahead. Where was I? It was later that he received the external sign of circumcision as a seal to confirm that God had already transferred his righteousness to him by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So now this qualifies him to be become the father of all who believe among the non-Jewish people. And like their father of faith, Abraham, Abraham God also transfers his righteousness to them by, by faith. Yes, Abraham is obviously the true father of faith for the Jewish people who are not only circumcised, but also but who walk in the way of faith that our father Abraham displayed before his circumcision. 
God promised Abraham and his descendants that they would have an heir who would reign over the world. This royal promise was not fulfilled because of a because Abraham kept all the law, but through the righteousness that was transferred by faith. Go ahead. For if keeping the law earns the inheritance, then God is robbed of its sorry, then faith is robbed of its power and the promise becomes useless. For the law provokes punishment, and where no law exists, there cannot be a violation of the law. The promise depends on faith so that it can be experienced as a JJ knows tomorrow when he goes anytime. He knows the Lord did it for him. The Lord did it for him. Why? See this, the promise depends on faith so that it can be experienced as a grace gift. And now it extends to all the descendants of Abraham. This promise is not only meant for those who obey the law, but also to those who enter into the faith of Abraham, the father of us all. We have entered into that. That's what the scripture means when it says, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our example and father. For in God's presence, he believed that God can raise the dead and call into being things that don't even exist yet. Against all odds, see this, it didn't exist. JJ is at mark sheet of 82,000 and God called that thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> Against, for those, I don't know, international who are hearing this, JJ is a son and beloved, young son in 12th standard because it may not be in this video. And he got 82% in uh, his 12th exam. And if you know, JJ started out in beloved, he would come faithfully he would serve and however, he learned his drums, everything. And during his exams, he didn't even study. Uh, he fared badly in accounts and got 92%. And overall, he got 82%, 90%. Okay, so he got it by grace. Against all odds, when it looked hopeless, Abraham believed the promise and expected God to fulfill it. He took God at his word. That's sons. Write that down in your book right now. Sonship means taking your father at his, not because you see it or don't. Can you take somebody at their word? When I tell you just here, beloved, can you just take me at my word? I'll tell you why I've been saying that. Recently, I had a dream and I was wearing a suit, two suits. Because, you know, I was saying here this, here that also. And then I had a dress underneath and God said, you have a pretty dress. Talk about your dress. So I was like, okay, I'm going to tell them just your beloved. Start hearing beloved. If I'm in beloved, you're beloved. And I got that from a dream. And God said, let them see the dress. You need to be in your own clothes. Means I was looking funny, you know, wearing a suit. It's not even my style. Okay, but God was saying that you're saying, hear this, hear that. Tell them to hear beloved. There's a reason why he's told me, okay? And so start hearing beloved. Sanctified it. And Take it as the counsel of the Lord and take it as just at his word. Can you do something and that it'll bear fruit in your life? Start doing this. Of course, the ones I always recommend and I know what they're speaking. Okay, so start hearing beloved on YouTube. We have it in all channels. Start hearing that word. Say, I take God at his word. Write it down. I want you to write this down. Everybody, that's what righteousness means. Taking God at his word. That means not analyzing it, not speaking it. If he said this tree is bad for me, I'm not supposed to eat it. He just had to take him at his word. You say I'm healed? Doesn't even look like it? Okay, I take you at your word. And I'm just going to take you at your word. And then when it says I died, okay, I died. It's no more me. It's you who live. Okay, I take you at your word. No processing it also. I just believe that. That's what it means to believe like a child. Just take it at the word. He took God at his word and as a result, he became the father of many nations. God's declaration over him came to pass. He took God at his word and what God said, he fulfilled through him. Your descendants will be so many that they will be impossible to count. Go ahead. In spite of being nearly 100 years old, when the promise of having a son was made, his faith was so strong that it could not be undermined by the fact that he and Sarah were incapable of conceiving a child. He never stopped believing God's promise, for he was made strong in his faith 
to father a child. And because he was mighty in faith and convinced that God had all the power needed to fulfill his promises, Abraham glorified God. So now you can see why Abraham's faith was credited to his account as righteousness before God. Go ahead. And this declaration was not just spoken over Abraham, but also over us. For when we believe and embrace the one who brought our Lord Jesus back to life, perfect righteousness will be credited, credited to our account as well. Jesus was handed over to be crucified for the forgiveness of our sins and was raised back to life to prove that he had made us right with God. Say, I'm right with God. Not through your flesh. Your flesh is going to mess up. You're right with God by faith. And because you're born of the seed, everything in the seed will produce what it's supposed to do. Righteousness leads to holiness, not the law. Sorry. Righteousness by faith will lead to true holiness. I don't tell anybody to come and do. They want to. That is righteousness by faith, true holiness, not outside. It is inside out. Go ahead. That's it. Yay. That's it of chapter 4. We are only covering one chapter per week. Chapter 5, we have 16. How many weeks? How many months will Roman go on till? <laughs> it's okay. We are going slow. Okay. You are right with God. Say, I'm right with God. I'm righteous. Righteousness leads to life. Okay, so now when you say someone came and told me, you know, they were very upset, Priya, that they know God, but why their lives don't live it. But neither do yours. Neither does mine. But you know, when we speak that, because we have a standard of what it should look like. But if God had to show the person that we talk about, but even if we had to show my life, it would be as disqualified as the others. But see, in our head, we have like some standards of sin. So we can look at ours and we think not, but the others we want. And so if you are there, it's actually righteousness in us, self-righteousness. And that just needs to go here. And then once we're settled with this, you don't have yardsticks for any, whether believer, not believer, whether they say things, it's okay for me. I really don't, it doesn't matter to me. I have no yardsticks of performance because we're both right in Christ by faith. And when you water now, I say this, if the wrong seed is watered, they will walk also. So I know probably they've not been watered well enough. But if this, they come here and they start hearing. How many know that a seed to be watered, it takes time for the shoot to come out on the surface. But things are happening inside. And then after a period of time, you'll start seeing the right fruit. So when I see someone's seed and not walk, it's because they've been watered wrong. They've been told they're Adam. And then you water the right seed after some time. And will produce the right fruit. But for first, there should be no condemnation to both. You're still, they're still sons. Okay? And then you call them and tell them, come to beloved. Or give them a link first. Let them hear. And then they come, they get watered. It takes time. Grace takes time. The law is quick. Means impulsive. You tell now, don't do. Okay, they might do, but they'll go and fall again. But grace might take time. But it, it is eternal. That means it is patient. Patient. Okay, God's love for you is patience. So grace is patience extended. We wait, we see. And then that fruit will be eternal. It will be long lasting. Okay, so let's take a spiritual tithe. A spiritual tithe means just the way you give your money. A spiritual tithe is everything that you heard today. All the understanding that came, all the life that came to you, your soul. You're going to say, Jesus, I'm taking a tithe of this and I'm giving it to you. And you're going to bless him with it. All of you pray in tongues. Is anyone here who doesn't pray in tongues? Raise your hands up. We're going to get you to speak in tongues. You don't speak in tongues. You believe in Jesus. You have a tongue. You'll speak in tongues. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Come on. Lay hands on them. I, I want you to just follow what I'm saying. By faith. When thoughts come, it looks gibberish. It sounds stupid. Ignore all those thoughts. Okay. The spirit of the sun is in you. It is your inheritance to speak in tongues. So I want you, if you have trouble, just follow what I'm saying and you'll get your own tongue. Okay? Come on, let's just pray for her. Just say, Holy Spirit, fill me up right now. Come on, auntie, just follow me. 
very good that's it you started speaking in tongues and let that life just keep multiplying in you okay now just say this after me and i want anyone who's sick in body anyone who's sick in body if you have symptoms, please come ahead. We'd love to pray for you. Or any other situation you want prayer for, come on up. We're going to pray for you. Okay? Just say, Jesus, your life is in me. And it is giving life to my body, my physical body, repelling all manner of sickness, all manner of darkness out of me. My portion is life and life in abundance. My words are spirit and they are life. I speak only the new seed, my new creation, identity. Amen. Just say, Jesus, you are my high priest. And right now, I give you a spiritual tithe of all the increase, of all the life, of all the understanding that came to my soul. And I worship you with it, Jesus. Come on, just close your eyes. Just worship Jesus for everything that you heard. All the life that came, all the lies that got destroyed. Jesus, we just worship you. I thank you that I am in the new, that all things have passed away. All things have become new and all things are of you. And in every area of your life, our lives we see life and life in abundance just because of your blood jesus we are born of you we are just like you as you are so are we right now and i just speak right now victory and life over all the sons listening i thank you father that our inheritance is not death because you destroy death. The inheritance of a son of God is only life and life in abundance. Amen.